This is a true story about ordinary heroes. This is about very simple women who have made an extraordinary difference to their own communities. From Afghanistan to Bolivia, a quiet revolution is taking place. Illiterate and semi-literate rural women who have never left their villages in their lives, let alone going to another country several thousand miles away, have proved the impossible is possible. They are baffling engineers, donors and paper qualified experts by showing incredible sophisticated skills. From Ethiopia to Sierra Leone, across to West Africa, Middle-aged rural women between ages 35 and 55 years have shown tremendous courage and left their husbands, children and grandchildren behind. To come to Thelonia, a small remote village in Rajasthan, India. To be trained in six months to be solar engineers, what colleges and universities barely managed to complete in five years and that too with very poor results. These women are from poor agricultural communities, housewives, daily wage laborers, grandmothers, midwives, washerwomen, stone crushers and small shopkeepers. All now recognized in respected leaders in their own communities. What is common among all is that they have never been through a formal educational system. Even after six months in Thelonia, they know no theories of physics, electronics, mathematics, no names of any spare parts, and have never heard of generating power from the sun. The written word was not used, because they only spoke Jola, Tambashek, Arabic, Dari, Spanish, French, and broken English. Working with their hands, identifying parts and fabricating them only by their color and not the name. All the women sitting together on one table from Bolivia, Afghanistan, Timbuktu, Mali, Ethiopia, Cameroon, the Gambia, learned how to assemble charge controllers and inverters, learned how to establish a rural electronic workshop in small rooms donated by the community, install solar panels on the roof, connect them to the deep cycle batteries and solar electrify each house in their village they came from. But what is also common between them all is that they have solar electrified each house in their own village without any technical help from outside. By December 2007, 50 villages and a total of 2,500 houses in six countries over Asia, Africa and South America will have been solar electrified by 14 barefoot women solar engineers. They will have saved nearly 250,000 litres of kerosene and 400 tonnes of wood from being burnt. When the target is the poorest of the poor, earning less than 50p a day, it is inhuman and insensitive to talk about business models. When the rich in the cities receive heavily subsidized power in their houses, why should the poor in their villages not receive the same benefits? What is unique about the barefoot approach is the importance being given to preparing the community first. giving them a sense of ownership, involving them in the decision-making on how much they are prepared to pay as a monthly contribution. And who among the poorest of the poor women 
should go for training as a barefoot solar engineer. The partnership model is what the Barefoot Approach believes is the most sustainable model. Where the state or the donor subsidizes the solar units or solar lanterns and the community contributes to the stipend of the Barefoot Solar Engineer. The repair and maintenance of the solar units and eventually, after five years, replaces the battery. Poor communities in all these countries in Asia, Africa and South America have agreed to pay what they now pay for kerosene, wood, candles, torch batteries and diesel. Depending on their economic status, they have agreed to pay between 3 to 5 dollars per month per solar unit. This is a fundamental breakthrough because nothing should be free. So what are the universal lessons we have learnt from training poor illiterate rural women as solar engineers from three continents and six countries around the globe? Lesson 1. Any middle-aged illiterate woman from any part of the world who has never left her village can be trained in six months in India to be a competent and confident solar engineer. Lesson 2. Prepare the community first by involving them in taking major decisions on behalf of the whole community and only then bring in the technology in the village. This will reduce the dependency on urban skills from outside. It will also give a sense of ownership. Lesson 3. Keep all urban-based paper qualified solar engineers away from the inaccessible non-electrified villages because their top-down approach is doomed to fail. They have neither the vision, nor the courage, nor the faith to select and train illiterate women as engineers. They also do not have the communication tools to speak as equals to poor communities. Lesson 4. What makes the barefoot approach fundamentally different is that no certificates, diplomas or degrees are issued after training to the women. The certification is done by the community they serve. The issuing of certificates is one major reason why migration takes place from villages to cities. Lesson 5. To reach the very poor, only a partnership model will work. Where providing the hardware is the responsibility of governments or the donors. And the repair and maintenance is the responsibility of the poor rural communities. The barefoot approach is being replicated all over the world. 30 poor rural women are presently in the Barefoot College from 25 villages in Bhutan. By January 2008, women will have come from Mauritania and Benin. The Barefoot Approach has worked in three continents, six countries and 50 villages across the globe. Between 2005 and 2007, the total amount spent has been close to $1.2 million. less than what is being wasted on one millennium village. 
There is no question this approach is here to stay. What Mahatma Gandhi said comes to mind. First they ignore you, then they laugh at you, then they fight you and then you win.